our next guest doesn't like the offerings from the GOP candidates or the Obama administration. Uh, joining us now, former Reagan OMB director David Stockman, who is, oh, there's a lot more to you than, than the way we've been teasing you this morning, that you just take the Romney Ryan budget and you, you, you sound like you're, uh, I don't know, a, a turncoat Republican right. that's thrown his lot in with, <laughs> with the Democrat. In fact, you think Ron Paul probably has the... Well, has he the, was the only one that was right about the Fed, and the Fed is the heart of the problem. We have destroyed the capital markets, the money markets, interest rates mean nothing, everything is trading off the Fed, Wall Street isn't even home, it's a bunch of computers trading word clouds, uh, you know, emitted by this central it, bank or that. It, now, in that environment, right. everybody's being given the wrong signal. In other words, the Ryan Romney campaign is about restoring vibrant capitalism. How can you do that when the financial markets are dead, the lifeblood of a capitalist system. That is the problem today. And the other thing you point out is why would either side come to the table to deal with long-term entitlement issues when you can borrow at zero? Yeah, you look at the uh, yield curve this morning, three-year money, 33 basis points. That's absurd. One-year money, 11 or 16, whatever it is. All the way out to five years, you can fund this debt at 65 basis points. Now, I spent a lot of years in Washington in Congress. I know what it takes to have people fall on the sword, to really reform entitlements, or finally face up to the military-industrial <laughs> complex, or maybe begin to reform the tax code. They'll never do it if you can keep borrowing free money forever, right. because the Fed and these lunatics who are running it, and I use that word advisedly, are basically telling the whole world on truths about the cost of money, about the cost of risk, about how you allocate. You wonder capital. why we get. You wonder why we get bubbles and, and you know when, when when you're when you're keeping things at zero. And obviously that's not what, what any of these yields. That's not where they should be. Yeah. Well, let me ask. Just let one me thing add you one did say that you said that that. that the the Repub the reason you don't you're mad at the Republicans is because they've abandoned the Republican principles of from of, of their forefathers more or less. Exactly, and it happened. Everything that Ronald Reagan stood for in the 1980s went down the tubes in September 2008 when they bailed out Wall Street when they came in with this tarp, which was an abomination, when they were unwilling to let Morgan Stanley go down the tubes, which it should have because of the speculation that it was doing and the uh, you know irresponsible, reckless balance sheet that it had. If you can't fail, you shouldn't succeed, right? That's exactly right. And so we haven't even addressed any of that. We have simply said there was some great crisis. We don't know where it came from. Maybe it came on an asteroid or meteor, a meteor from outer space. But it's over, and we're going to keep interest rates at zero for six years. Go back to pre-1990, you know, I, I was around quite a while. No one in 1990 would have thought keeping interest rates at zero for six years was anything and but the Romney lunatic. Ryan, the Romney Ryan budget, I looked at some of the things you're, you're, you don't like about it. Yeah. The, you hear that Medicare is going to end as we know it, and then the, the Republicans come back and say, well, wait a second, anyone who's over 55 won't be touched. That's what you don't like about it. Here's it takes 10 years to address right. Medicare. You, well, you want to address it even sooner. And you want, you want to do a lot of cuts that the progressives would not like, <laughs> of but you, course. you admit that there's some tax. Uh, of course. So they, you know, they got the wrong guy for their poster child for, I, I, for, I the, think they for do. the left. I think they do, but here, here's the thing. Uh, we have a $800 billion defense and national security budget. Right. I call that the warfare state. It's absurd that we're spending we don't need $800 billion when we have no industrial enemies in the world. Ryan wants to hold it or increase it. All right, $800 billion goes to Social Security. 40 million of the people on it need it. There's 15 million that are affluent that have many other assets and sources of income. It. They should be means tested now. Medicare. He's taken a huge hit for Medicare. He doesn't touch it till 2023. Well, why does someone think we're going to get between now and 2023? It's a third rail because you can't even say 2023 no, without getting. Where would, you cut, where would you cut the defense budget by? I would cut it by a third. I would radically come in there. I would tell the generals, put your toys away, get out your sharp pencils. We are going to bring this thing down to a level in real terms that Eisenhower in 1960 said we could live with when we were facing a real industrial enemy that actually uh, was able to do some damage what to the United States. What else would you States. cut? Uh, I, I said I would means test heavily uh, Social Security, yeah. uh, Medicare, dra drastically reduce uh, defense spending. How would you handle Medicare? Me uh, uh, Medicare. You, you know, the do thing you like is, a voucher program? Do you know, like, what's your... It's too late for that. You need to simply means test it. So if you're affluent, you're going to pay a much higher premium. 
Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to pay bigger co-pays, bigger deductibles. Okay, but that's, that is the equivalent of raising taxes on some people. Yes, and then we have to raise taxes on everybody, okay? The, the uh, Bush, the Bush tax, tax cuts expire. All of them, for all everybody. Of them. We cannot afford them. We couldn't See, afford them. He's not your guy. Then. He's not the guy you thought he was. <laughs> okay. He's not, you know, you, you want him to come in. You, you know, you were, you were going, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. That's not who he is. And, and you've written these things about the fantasy of the Obama. If you ever wrote about the Obama budget, it, it'd be even a nastier piece. Well, well, you know, the reason I haven't done that is I assume people can see that. Okay. It well, is you can't <laughs> assume that. You know what I thought of? You heard what I said. Yeah. You're going to you want to meet all the actresses that, did, that are on the left. You want to be a left winger so you can meet yeah, Hollywood. Right, That's right, not right. it, right? Uh, I'll tell you what. The Obama budget is total fantasy. He is saying we're four square for protecting Social Security forever. And Medicare, you can't take a you, dime you, out of. Do you want, a, he, you he want me to throw him off the set? <laughs> this was, he I came under, under false pretenses. Happen, you didn't know he was going to say this stuff, happen, did you? I happen to agree with him as well. <laughs> well, no, but here's the thing about Obama. To do all of that, and fine, that's what a, a liberal Democrat uh, At wants least you know to what do. you're getting. A pro-big government Democrat. But right. you can't go out and say we're going to keep taxes low on 98% of the right. population. I know, they love, the, they love those Th- tax that cuts. Is, those Bush tax the cuts. Bush tax cuts for the 98%. They love those. Yeah. What are progressives thinking? Half of the population doesn't <laughs> even pay income tax. But, They're right. getting protected already. The rest of the population has to pay for the government that all these uh, Democrats and big government, big spenders want. And the, the problem we have right now is two free lunch parties, and it's giving bad signals to everybody. I want to go back to that junk bond rate of 4.95 on a double B. What kind of signal are you giving to the private sector that you right. can borrow way down deep uh, in yeah. the capital structure of a double B credit, a junk credit, for 250 basis points over inflation? Jennifer, so, you're in the private sector. What do you think? Yeah, look, <clears throat> I think... Uh, Look at corporate balance sheets. They've gotten incredibly better over the last number of years, right? So lower rates hasn't led people to borrow money in that period. It's all been reflected the same thing. People have been repair mode. So the government sector's been borrowing money. It's true. Uh, private sector has been shoring up cash as fast as they can. Look, I think the issue with politics to me, I think, is practical, which is that uh, I think when we talk to a lot of companies and we look at markets ourselves, to some degree, you care whether things are taxes are at one level versus another. Most of all, you want people to stop yelling and just have some predictability. If there's no predictability, you can't invest. A lot to yell about. How about, the, the, how about cronyism? Corporate cronyism is like, terrible. But the uh, fiscal cliff, everybody talks about as if it's a one-time event. It's not. It's a permanent event. We have got ourselves buried so deep. Our promises. In promises and parties dug in, the Republicans are out of their minds. You, you, you listen to David raise, Walker, David. I mean, do you, do yeah, he's you good. He's good. Okay. Do you see that the, 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 he totals up our our promises? It's yeah. not seventeen. Yeah. It's not seventeen yeah. trillion. Yeah. It's yeah. like sixty. I know, but Joe, when you get to this cliff, five hundred billion of tax uh, cuts expiring, a hundred billion a year of the sequester and so forth. Does that? They're not going to solve it through some grand compromise. You, but you, what would happen if the Bush tax cuts expired? Uh, the economy would go into recession, which it needs to. And I know that's a very controversial but we, state. But our deficit would go away in, in 10 years. We could it? work out of it. And we have to uh, eat our broccoli. We can't just keep stimulating artificially this economy by borrowing from the future. Okay, you can do it for one year at the bottom. I, I, the news right. flash is this is month 39 of the recovery. 39 but you months. Don't, you don't see any hope that any of the, well, the, the way it's being demagogued on both sides. Of course sides. not. But, but what I'm saying is the average cycle since World War II has been 48 months. We're in month 39, and we have all these boys and girls on Wall Street begging the Fed for for another injection of sugar. Now, this is how sick the system is, and you have to blame it on the Federal Reserve. So if Romney were real about what he's saying about restoring capitalism, he would say, day one, hour one, job one, Bernanke is fired. He does say I'm that. Clean. Well, he didn't, he's not that, he said he's he's not that clear about yeah, it. But, but until he says we're going to clean house at the Fed, because that's where this crisis came from in 2008, that's why we're still buried. We're crushing savers. We're giving uh, speculators and traders free overnight money. We're telling you, until 2014, you, cr- you, you get free. You, just, you weren't <laughs> expecting this. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, but I, uh, I, 
Do you think he's got your very interesting views? Right. <laughs> <laughs> before he, I'm listening very closely. <laughs> but isn't it true that when you tell traders that till 2:14 the overnight oh, rate's going to be know. zero, you go out and right. you buy anything with a yield, anything with a duration, because the Fed isn't going to right. surprise you. Now I was there. A little bit of consistency, though. Well, look at I was there when Volcker was Fed chairman. Right. There wasn't a guy on Wall Street who wanted to take anything for granted when he was chairman because he was going to do what he thought was right. He wasn't going to simply placate the boys right. and girls who want a little more. David, it was great. Thank, thank <laughs> yeah. you.